Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Blake Rogers. I'm the Executive Director for the Tourism Industry Association of the Yukon. Uh, thank you for joining for us for today's Tourism Town Hall. TIAC's Tourism Town Hall series is an, is an event partnership between the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Destination Canada, and the Tourism Industry Association of the Yukon. We'd also like to thank Air Canada as the sponsor for the series. This tourism town hall will provide the opportunity to hear from TIAC and Destination Canada to better understand efforts being made nationally on behalf of our industry. More importantly, this session will provide an opportunity to engage on issues affecting your businesses and the tourism industry in this ter territory during this time of COVID. It will also give you a chance to provide feedback on government policy for the recovery and rebuilding of our sector. Before we start, just a reminder that we have that we'll have time at the end of the session for some Q and A. Uh, if you have any questions that you have not already sent to us in advance, please submit them to the, through the Q and A interface, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. We will pick up pick them up during the course of the presentations. Also, please note that today's session will be recorded and be made available on the TIAC website. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I'd like to take a moment just to acknowledge the importance of the land which we all call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in strengthening relationships between nations and to enhancing understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. I'd like to acknowledge that uh, we are on the traditional territory of the, I'm, call, I'm coming to you from, from Dawson City in, in the Yukon, uh, so I'm on the traditional territory of the Trondek Wichin First Nation. I know many of our callers are uh, on, uh, are, are many of our attendees today are on, on traditional territories of other, uh, of the Yukon's 14 First Nations, uh, including uh, Whitehorse, which is uh, the traditional territory of the Kwanlin Dun and Tonquachin Council. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Our panelists for today are Beth Potter, President and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, and Marsha Walden, President and CEO of Destination Canada. It's now my pleasure to welcome Beth Potter. Beth, over to you. Okay, so I don't know why my video is not coming up. There we go. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Hi, and so, okay, thank you, Blake. Thank you so much. Sorry about that little technical glitch there. Um, I just want to say hello uh, to everyone. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Bonjour tout le monde et merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. I am happy to be here today to both uh, update you on the work that TIAC has been doing and to engage in an open dialogue about the state of the industry in the Yukon and across the country. As the new president and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada and a longtime member of Canada's tourism family, I understand how hard this past year has been and how concerned you are about the state of the industry in Canada and what the future looks like. I would like to talk to you today about our plans to get Canada's tourism economy through to the other side of this. Now, we're based in Ottawa, uh, but that allows us to take action on behalf of Canadian tourism businesses representing tourism interests at the national level. Our advocacy work involves promoting and supporting policies, programs, and activities that will benefit the sector's growth and development. Our membership reflects partnerships among all sectors of the industry and provincial and territorial and regional tourism associations. We have a strong relationship with the PTTIA or the Provincial and Territorial Tourism Industry Associations Committee, uh, including work, we do a lot of work with Blake directly at the Tourism Industry Association of the Yukon. So we like to work collaboratively with these partners across the country to ensure that we are aware of and can address the full range of issues facing you. This past year has looked a little different in terms of our advocacy efforts. As your industry advocate at the national level for the past 13 months, we have been focused on securing support for you throughout this pandemic, ensuring you survive and successfully recover post COVID-19. We've been meeting with MPs and senators consistently elevating the issues impacting our industry, 
and most recently promoting the recommendations in our 2021 Tourism Recovery Plan in advance of uh, this week's federal budget. We also work hard to ensure that our collective voice is heard by the public through national media. This helps elevate the conversation and importance of our issues in the eyes of federal decision makers. As we are all too aware, our business was the first hit by the pandemic, the hardest hit by closures, and will be the last to recover. This is the message we have been sharing with decision makers here in Ottawa and with opinion leaders across the country. Our plan was developed by our recovery committee and is available on our website. It has gone through a few iterations as we navigate the crisis and was created to ensure the survival of Canada's tourism economy and global competitiveness as we plan for when restrictions are lifted. Our plan follows the following three themes, supporting business solvency, championing safety, and keeping Canada globally competitive. It also follows the three phases of response, recovery, and resilience. Since last March, we have be, uh, seen some business programs which our industry has been able to access, such as the Canada Emergency Business Account, Wage and Rent Subsidy Programs, the Regional Recovery and, and Relief Fund, and most recently, the creation of the Highly Affected Sectors Credit Availability Program. TIAC works closely with the departments who manage these programs to bring your concerns direct to source and ensure that issues are heard and inefficiencies are addressed. Now this past Monday, for the first time in almost two years, the Finance Minister, Chrystia Freeland, unveiled the federal budget. Tourism was mentioned many times compared to other sectors, which is an acknowledgement of the work that we've done. We want to thank every single one of you who supported our messaging, especially over the past few months. We want to thank you for sending a letter of support to your MP. By highlighting our sector, the government has taken steps to recognize the value and contribution that all of you make and the support that we need or that you need to ensure that you can recover and rebuild. So what did the budget mean for you? As mentioned, our recovery document outlined our asks in three key areas. We were pleased to see supports in all three areas announced, but there is still much work to do. There are also a number of measures in the budget that are not directly tied to tourism, but will impact our sector. Things like affordable housing, infrastructure, immigration, Parks Canada, and broadband. I will go through a few measures that directly impact us, and we will continue to provide updates as we work through the other proposed programs. It is important to note that all of these measures must go through the normal parliamentary procedure before they are passed, and this is where our work becomes vital. Now, Budget 2021 proposed a $1 billion package over three years directly for tourism. This includes support through the regional development agencies for major festivals and events and towards a tourism relief fund to support investments by local tourism businesses in adapting to the pandemic. And funding to Destination Canada to ensure Canadian destinations are top of mind for Canadians and to support destination marketing organizations to entice the return of high value international travelers. The Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy and Rent Subsidy are very important programs to our sector. And TIO has been advocating, sorry, TIAC has been advocating to extend these programs until the end of 2021. The proposed extension to September is a good signal towards business support, but we will need, we will still need these supports past the fall. So while we welcome the extension, we will be continuing our work to ensure that the hardest hit businesses receive continued support. There was also a proposal for the new Canada Recovery Hiring Program for eligible employers that continue to experience decline in revenues. This initiative will help businesses hire, uh, hire back laid off workers or to bring on new ones or to increase hours. We were happy to see more supports outlined for the aviation sector. We still have work to do on our specific asks, 
but this will help further recovery for our tourism economy overall through funding for testing infrastructure and advanced technologies. These measures will help restore Canadians' confidence in the safety of air travel when public health restrictions and border measures are adjusted. One of the biggest tasks moving forward is going to be the labour challenge. We know we are one of the biggest employers of new Canadians and immigration levels are down over the past year. We were already in a labour crisis before this pandemic hit and now we have added to that. TIAC is working very closely with Tourism HR Canada trying to map out how we are going to best approach this, but this is top of mind. There were a number of significant pieces in the budget that will affect this area and we will be digging into those in the coming days and weeks. To help small businesses, we saw the proposal of the Canadian Digital Adoption Program to help adopt new technologies um, and enhance the Canada Small Business Financing Program. We were pleased to see the inclusion of efforts to lower the cost of doing business by reducing credit card transaction fees. The government has stated it will work with stakeholders on consultations for this and we will be a part of that process. There are numerous other items in the budget that impact our sector, over 700 pages of items, uh, but this is a lot of information and you're probably wondering how to learn when and if these supports become available and how to access them. We will actively be sending out updates and information over the coming weeks as we learn more through our discussions with government. With some comfort in subsidy programs extended, how do we begin to move forward? We are in a critical third wave and lockdowns are intensifying across the country and the national dialogue on travel is not where we would like it to be. The situation is dire in many of our provinces and territories. Our first step will be to continue advocating for those pieces that were not addressed in the budget and to ensure efficient and effective rollout of the PROMS support and relief programs. I'd like to take you through TIAC's vision as we move forward on a few important pieces. We believe that proof of vaccination should become a common part of a traveler's travel documents moving forward. We recommend that Canada adopt this. There are certain destinations in the world where you must show proof of vaccine to enter and thus a process already exists. However, we know not everyone will get vaccinated. And that is why it is crucially important that we also plan for testing and processing um, for those that are traveling without a vaccine. Travel cannot be limited to only those who have been vaccinated. So testing and contact tracing will have to be a part of the process. We are looking to lead the way in changing the current narrative on behalf of the sector. We need to let the public know when restrictions are lifted that our businesses, that you, are prepared to offer safe experiences and deliver services following all of the necessary health and safety protocols. We know just how much work and investment you have put into ensuring your businesses are compliant and ready for guests and consumer confidence will be vital. While health and safety of Canadians is paramount to our sector, we know travel will resume and are asking for the ability to plan. We have been starting conversations recommending solutions for criteria to reopen and calling on government to take a leadership role to put a line in the sand in terms of goalposts or a target date for reopening. You need time to plan, to market, to retool, to retrain, to rehire before you're ready to open. And we have been facilitating conversations with the Canadian government and at the global table through the World Travel and Tourism Council, looking at what other countries have been doing to ensure Canada is part of the seamless traveler experience for people that are moving around the world as we recover from this pandemic. Finally, before I close, I encourage you to visit our site, tourismcounts.ca. This is where we update our advocacy initiatives and provide updates and information. I would like to thank the TIAC members who are participating in today's town hall. We greatly appreciate your continued support of our advocacy efforts and for strengthening our voice. If you're not a TIAC member, I invite you to join today. As a not-for-profit organization, our advocacy efforts rely on the support and investment of our members. So please join your peers across this territory and country in fueling the work that we are doing today for your survival and recovery.
our success begins with your support. I look forward to our discussions in just a few minutes and I'll pass it back to Blake now. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Beth. Um, it's now my pleasure to welcome Marsha Walden. Marsha, over to you. Thank you, Blake. Uh, hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me here today to join you. It's a great pleasure to be speaking with our partners all across the Yukon, although I have to admit I would rather be there in person. I would like to acknowledge that I'm joining you from Vancouver today, the traditional home of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil Je suis très heureuse d'être ici aujourd'hui. Je vais donner cette présentation en anglais, mais je peux fournir le document en français aux gens intéressés. I'd like to start today just by um, providing some of you with a uh, quick backgrounder on who we are and what our role is within the sector, knowing that uh, likely none of you have not paid much attention uh, to um, our overall function in, in the tourism ecosystem. Uh, we're a federal crown corporation. Uh, uh, Destination Canada's mandate is to really work with industry to sustain a vibrant and profitable uh, tourism industry. We do that through marketing, through uh, research and business intelligence. Uh, we more recently have taken on a role in destination development work with uh, provincial and territorial partners uh, and in forging partnerships that help us uh, work as a tourism ecosystem all across the country and help us compete better internationally. Uh, and as everyone watching today probably knows, um, Never Before has a strong collaborative response from our industry being so critical to our future success and survival. And much of our industry's strength really, uh, I think can over time be found in the relationships that, um, that we as an industry have formed with each other, whether it's the operator, tourism operator down the street or down the highway. Um, or across, uh, across the road, and so it is with us. Uh, Destination Canada, TIAC, and TIA Yukon have worked together for many years now to bolster our industry's prospects um, and help us compete better in what is a pretty ferocious um, global environment, uh, com competition-wise, and, and becoming more so every day. So before looking forward, let's just have a quick look at where we are right now. And um, of course, uh, I think we all can acknowledge how very, very difficult this past year has been. Uh, and I want to ensure that um, we understand what a harsh reality most of you are facing. And as shocking as this slide is, it certainly doesn't capture or speak to the personal impacts that many of you have faced this year in trying to manage uh, your business through this crisis and, um, and deal with the impacts that it has on your employees and on your families. As uh, Beth referenced, we've heard many times across our industry that tourism was hit first, hit hardest, and will be the last to recover. And we know that recovery will be hard and long. But to help with that recovery, uh, I'd like to touch today on our work in three phases, really across three time horizons. Uh, first of all, it's all about surviving the pandemic, of course. And um, as we've seen, the related restrictions on travel continue to challenge us. Um, the situation is dire and in, more, in many cases deteriorating and um, the the key to recovery is first getting a grip on the ravages of this pandemic. Next, uh, in uh, reviving our market revenue, um, there, is the prom there is promise on the horizon when we look at um, uh, the level of demand and we see the promise of growth and opportunity for our future uh, continuing once these restrictions are lifted. And over the long term, we really need to continue to support what's needed um, immediately, but also ensure that we are doing things and making decisions that help us increase the vitality of our industry long term to ensure that we're delivering net benefits to communities and long term resilience for the businesses of our industry. So let's just spend a moment talking about the survival stage um, and our initial response to the pandemic, uh, really to help our industry 
survive its devastating impacts in 2020. Very early on, it was um, pretty clear that travel would need to restart first at a very hyper-local level. And in most of Canada, we saw that ray of hope uh, in the summer of 2020, in some areas more than others, granted. Um, and so we worked very closely with our provincial and territorial partners to try to create an agile response through a co-op marketing approach that was able to deal with the very different realities of each part of our country as they emerged from various phases of the pandemic. And that involved for us a $30 million Destination Canada investment, which was matched dollar for dollar by the provinces and territories, and then executed through local cities and communities to help speak to local audiences about what they could do to support their regional businesses. And we worked with Tourism Yukon in this case to jointly provide a million dollars and put that money in the places we felt it could have the most impact in the short term. And that was all about supporting local, local restaurants, local experiences, local operators. We also, um, more at a pan-Canadian level, invested more than $18 million in other initiatives and partnerships. Uh, to help bring together very significant players, some of whom have huge reach, uh, to extend their buying power and our buying power across partners um, throughout the sector, whether it was business events or um, in, in Rendezvous Canada type support. And um, it, these are important initiatives uh, to really ensure that wherever opportunity exists and it's um, not <laughs> symmetrical everywhere that we take advantage of what uh, um, potential there is in the marketplace for those local operators. I want to all, all also acknowledge um, that governments really at every level of our society have worked uh, tirelessly to help sustain businesses and jobs right across the economy, but um, also more specifically for us in the tourism sector. And listed here is a, a number of programs, Beth touched on a bunch more, um, and the speed and scale of the federal government's response to the pandemic, I think has never been seen before in, in peace times. And um, at every level of government, we're seeing extraordinary response and of course, this week alone, we saw an additional billion dollars to directly support tourism initiatives and tourism recovery and many uh, adjacent programs that will also have beneficial impacts for our industry. So uh, I think um, while there's continue to be some disappointments, of course, and work to be done, as Beth said, uh, the response that we've received so far has been enormous. Uh, looking ahead, um, beyond survival, I think that we are seeing some very good signs of future demand that are pointing in a positive direction for us once we have the opportunity to, uh, to promote more aggressively uh, in a condition where restrictions have been eased. And we know that recovery has to be really focused on market-driven revenue. Um, government support uh, does not make businesses whole and it cannot continue indefinitely. We need an opportunity and a fighting chance to get back in the revenue uh, flow. And um, so good things uh, are uh, on the horizon and looking at Canadian search behavior around travel. Um, and I know on the vaccine front, about 70% of Yukoners now have received their first shot of uh, COVID-19 vaccine, which is really great news. I, in fact, uh, got my vaccine last night, so I'm thrilled. Um, but we, looking across Canada and the world, we know that there's still some significant bumps ahead in the road to recovery, and the third wave is certainly um, rearing its ugly head uh, at us right now. So what about Canadians? Well, if we're just talking about the domestic market for a moment, we know that 80% of Canadians say they do plan to travel when once restrictions are lifted. But we also know that Canada as a nation typically has a really huge travel deficit. And so we have some concern that Canadians will sit on their wallets and uh, wait for international borders to open rather than spending money in Canada. Canadians typically spend about $40 billion annually in outbound travel outside of Canada, whereas foreign travelers typically spend about $23 billion on inbound travel to Canada. 
So this year, capturing a very good portion of Canadians' outbound travel spending is really crucial to our recovery. And in fact, if we can have Canadians spend two thirds of their normal travel budget within Canada this year, rather than internationally in 2021, it can feed our sector's recovery, we estimate by a year, and will help to recreate 150,000 jobs across the country. So it's critically important. And for the 400 Yukon businesses that are directly uh, related to tourism, I know many of you rely almost entirely on international visitors. And uh, we, of course, hope that our international borders will be open soon and certainly in 2021. But it's also going to be critical to, to have the support of Canadians in the coming year uh, for certain and potentially in the coming years. We know that uh, historically tourism in the Yukon accounts for about 5% of your territory's GDP. And just for your information, that's the second highest percentage in terms of um, share of GDP of any part of Canada. Um, your industry is employing 2,000 employees. And so it's really critical that um, tourism help is helped to maintain those important jobs and the communities that they support, whether they're in tourism or not. Uh, so our short-term marketing plans are really channeled to de um, uh, designed to channel both domestic and international demand to all destinations across Canada. And typically, we really focus only on the international space, but you are going to see some significant investments from us this year in the domestic um, stimulation area. So a key part of the plan, of course, is reviving revenue. And for us, that's a multi-phased approach. Um, that uh, tries to align the evolution of our messaging with um, the reality of our health restrictions and what makes sense in these environments to be able to talk about. So right now we're still in the influence phase where we're reminding Canadians of the value of tourism in their communities and urging them to travel in Canada this year once restrictions are eased. And we're also reminding um, Canadians to um, to open their hearts and minds again to travelers. One of the downsides of this pandemic has been um, this uh, going up of fences between, uh, between communities, between provinces and territories, um, not to mention between us and our neighbors uh, to the south. So our role in the influence phase is to um, remind Canadians, as I said, of the value of tourism and to travel in Canada. And once those conditions improve, we'll be able to introduce more aggressive calls to action so that we can ask Canadians to really begin in earnest to plan and book their travel. And we do, I have a little ask of all of you. Um, we know that early travelers, those that are very likely to be visiting their friends and family initially can have a a very significant impact on the confidence of other travelers that will follow after them. So the power of seeing your friends traveling and gaining more information about what the new health and hygiene protocols look like in different parts of our sector is a really powerful confidence builder for that next tranche of travelers that will follow those early adopters. So in the months ahead, all of us, uh, and especially on the ground operators, must leverage those earlier ad adopters by amplifying um, the things that they're sharing in social media and, and with their peers um, so that those other travelers see uh, what a great experience it still remains in Canada. So I'd like to share with you just a few examples, um, in this case specific to the Yukon, uh, that we've had in the market during the influence phase. Um, and this has included a broad array of things in social media, earned media, videos, um, and lots of partner content that we've helped to amplify through our websites and channels. And we're trying really to get Canadians, as I said, to understand the importance of our industry, to inspire confidence in domestic travel, and to reignite that welcoming spirit of Canadian communities to ensure that once we can travel, Communities are ready and, and um, happy to welcome visitors back. Now, in the upper left of this screen, you may recognize Laird uh, Herbert, who is the owner and builder of the Black Spruce Hotel outside Whitehorse. And Laird told us that despite all of the challenges um, 
his uh, operation has faced this last year. Uh, and after launching a series of um, tiny vacation cabins, he's garnering lots of visitor interest. And in his eyes, uh, the future of tourism still remains bright. And uh, he recognizes what an important part his operation plays in the overall health uh, of his community. And we're also looking to amplify partner content wherever possible. So please share it with us. And you can see some good examples of that um, on the bottom right hand corner of this screen um, through our CanadaNice.com website, um, which in this case includes one from the Yukon Formline uh, Clean, Clean, <laughs> sorry, Clean Kit, Clean Kit, there we go, Clean Kit artist um, Megan Jensen, who is telling the story of how Raven brought light to the world. So very engaging content. And even in our short-term efforts um, uh, domestically, um, we are, of course, continuing to keep Canada top of mind in international markets. We're working very closely with all of our in-market teams globally to ensure that um, we are maintaining our global trade and travel media relationships. And for now, our primary focus, of course, has been on the U.S. market. And uh, one example you can see here is um, uh, our work with Virtuoso, which published a magazine uh, really focused on Boundless that's distributed to high value travelers all around the world. Um, and which included a major, major piece on the Yukon, um, as you can see here. And uh, in addition to their own distribution channels, this publication is, um, is uh, distributed through Air Canada's in-flight magazine, En Route. So, great opportunity for exposure there. So what about thriving in the long term? What will it really take for our visitor economy across Canada to thrive, to become better global competitors and to sustain that growth um, over time? Well, we believe it really begins with a new North Star, one that can orient us um, more towards why our corporation was created uh, to help support tourism in the first place. Our aspiration is to enhance the quality of life of Canadians uh, while also enriching the lives of visitors. And together with industry, we enable our Canadian culture to thrive and for place-based regenerative economies to emerge. And that's all through travel and hospitality done exceptionally well in our country. Uh, we'll continue work uh, to work very collaboratively with other organizations, whether they're in the public sector, the private sector, or uh, not-for-profits, as in TIAC or TIA Yukon, uh, including all of you on the call today to help uh, elevate Canada's competitiveness as a destination. We, really, we want to ensure that um, tourism is always giving more to Canada than it is taking from our communities and that our sector continues to build its social license with Canadians so that um, Canadians want to have tourism and visitors in their communities. So to come on that journey with us, let's please stay connected. Uh, you can see some of the ways you can stay in touch with us on the screen right now. Uh, je vous encourage à rester connecté avec nous sur nos canaux de communication. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. And I'll now uh, pass it back to Blake. Thanks a lot, Marcia. Um, I'd just like to, I, I'd like to go a little bit off script right now, just to, uh, just to acknowledge that um, I've had the opportunity to work with both uh, Marcia and Beth uh, over the years. And uh, the, the, the fact that they've gone from uh, uh, working as hard leaders in the advocating for the tourism industry, both in uh, BC and Ontario respectively from the provincial level and taking the jump to the federal level uh, on very short notice. Uh, uh, Marcia in the fall and Beth recently here in March um, during a, the biggest crisis that the industry has ever faced, um, I think is a, is a testament to their leadership and their ability to pivot. Um, I'd just like to say on behalf of the Yukon industry, we, uh, we really appreciate your friendship and, and your help over the years and we look forward to working with you uh, in, your, in your new role. So congratulations to both of you and, and thank you again for being part of this today. Thank, thank you, um, that's kind of you. 
I, I'd like to, at the beginning, uh, I mentioned that the, that the town hall was developed uh, for you to ask questions directly to industry leaders on issues affecting your business and the, tour and the tourism industry. Uh, many of you submitted questions in advance and, and uh, please continue to submit questions through the Q&A. Um, I'll ask that the panel please keep your responses short and to the point so that we can get through as many questions as possible and I'll do my best to direct them to the most appropriate person. Um, to start the conversation, uh, let's begin with some of the questions that were submitted in advance. So we'll, we'll start with Beth. So, uh, so Beth, this one's for you. Um, can or will TIAC take a leadership role in working with federal and provincial governments to ensure that COVID guidelines are consistent across the country to mitigate misinformation and misunderstanding by international visitors? Short answer is yes. Um, we have been um, working very closely, um, you know, between the provinces and the, and the territories and the and the and at the national level around the the, the whole notion of uh, protocols and what does that look like so that consumers can have that seamless traveler experience. And I know in the Yukon you have the Safe Travel Stamp uh, program, um, which is a global program designed to. Um, indicate to travelers that uh, their health and hygiene uh, has been put at the forefront and that businesses are welcome to are ready to welcome them back. So we will continue to to work with our partners across the country and with the governments across the country to ensure that that, that message of uh, we're ready um, as, a, as a country to welcome guests back um, is is one that also includes that safe message. Thanks so much. And yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, WTTC seal has been a, a real asset. I know that you've uh, employed that uh, really well throughout Ontario. I think uh, last I heard over 900 businesses in Ontario have taken that up. That's fantastic. I know that's a few outdated, so I'm, so I'm sure it's even higher by now. Um, but so congratulations on the work on that. Uh, Marcia, did you have any comments on this question as well too? I know I've, I wanted to open it up to to everybody, but uh, any comments on this one? Um, no, I think, uh, you know, the, the whole notion of um, having some symmetry across the nation is an important one. I know, um, you know, there's, there's such regular meetings now between the federal and provincial authorities on topics like this that um, I, my hope is that there will be some harmonization of those. And um, you know we have we have the opportunity to advise government. Uh, we don't advocate on behalf of industry, but we do advise on behalf of industry, and uh, certainly that forms part of our recommendation as well. Thanks for that. Um, so the next question is for you, Marcia, um, and it's uh, so how how will DMOs and government provide equitable sharing of the of the minimal local market across Canada when it comes to the domestic tourism market? How can each province be put in a position that isn't competitive and losing out based on uh, inequitable marketing and to tourism capacity to keep all of Canada afloat during recovery? So it's a mm -hmm. comprehensive wow. question. Well, that's yeah. a tough one. <laughs> uh, that's trying to like trying to regulate a laissez-faire environment. But um, all all kidding aside. Um, you know, there are, we have been working really closely with uh, our key partners all across the land um, to ensure that we're, uh, we're trying to be on the same page around how best to strategically um, rekindle uh, the recovery and to define roles and responsibilities for each of us so that we try to have more clearer swim lanes, if you will, about what, what each of us can do with the funding that we've been um, given. So. Uh, you know, some are doubling down in domestics, uh, others more like ourselves are, are really focused US and international, though we have a key role in domestic as well. Um, I think we're all interested and um, despite, I think, some pretty clear directives from uh, provincial and territorial governments to focus on intra-provincial or intra-territorial travel, um, our partners have asked us uh, when appropriate to be stimulating that, you know, travel beyond your own borders in Canada to really focus on that element of, of recovery. And um, we, you know, we've done a lot of tactical things too, I think, just to uh, avoid outbidding each other in certain 
um, circumstances. So, you know, just as there was this deep collaboration during the 2010 Olympic Games around, you know, the purchase of search terms, for instance, let's not outbid each other and, and you know, with the only outcome being Google gets richer, uh, you know, let's, let's really uh, determine who can best use various search terms and what products stay top of mind. So, you know, we're doing our best to manage that very complicated world, but I expect it will be extremely noisy. And I think on balance, that's probably a good thing for Canadian consumers to be exposed to a multitude of opportunities for what there is to see and do in Canada this year. Thanks, Marcia. Uh, Beth, do you have any, any thoughts on this from your experience? What I would just add to that, I mean, I think Marcia covered it really well, but what I would just add to that is um, as, as local businesses, you know, I encourage you to, to get involved um, with your local DMOs um, or your, your territorial uh, PMO because um, you've done a lot. You've done a lot to get ready and this is a, a prime time for you to really kind of be letting everyone know um, what, you've, what you've done to your business to make sure that um, people can, uh, well, well, first of all, that they know that you're, you're open again and you're ready, um, but also so that they can know what to expect. A lot of businesses have had to change the way in which they're doing businesses a little bit, and in some cases a lot. And so that communication with your, with your customers is, is critically important at this time. Thanks for that. Um, the next question uh, is directed to me. So uh, the question is, uh, what is the ETA of the border between BC and Yukon opening? Um, and that is a that is a, a another that's a tough question. Um, I, I'll do the. I, I think the the best I can really say on that one is that we have to. Uh, we're in a bit of a holding pattern right now based on what we're seeing with with the rest of the country. We have to to wait to see. Uh, make sure that um, what are what is uh, deemed safe by our chief medical officer, and I know our chief medical officer is in in uh, touch with um, with the chief medical officer of BC and, and other chief medical officers as well too. Um, so I think it's just at this point it's about watching and, and waiting and, and seeing how things uh, progress in the rest of Canada. We're we're doing the best that we can to to keep those lines of communication open, both with the CMOH as well as um, you know at the at the political level. So uh, Ty Yukon will continue to to work uh, to to help facilitate that uh, when it's possible to do so. Um, I think in the interim, what we're what we're uh, what we're pushing for and what we're really messaging is that um, relief is is needed more than ever right now, as the border remains uh, remains. Uh, tight and uh, and restrictions continue. Um, so we're uh, as the as um, has been uh, uh, one of the analogies that that's been used is the uh, the the one of two two pots on on the stove, one boiling and one simmering. And and you know right now it's the re the relief the pot is um, definitely on on boil, uh, but the recovery pot is simmering, and we're going to be turning the heat up on that as soon as possible. So um, that's. That's unfortunately the best answer I can give right now in this time of uncertainty, but we will uh, we'll definitely be keeping everybody posted if there's more, more information on that. I love that analogy, Blake. <laughs> That's actually, that was uh, that was coined. I have to give credit where credit's due. That's from our, our uh, the deputy minister of tourism and culture here. She, uh, it, it, uh, yeah, but it's, it's definitely a good one for sure. Um, I, uh, there's another, so we'll go back to, uh, just, uh, for our round two questions here. Um, this one's back for Beth. So Beth, um, when will cruise ships be allowed back into Canada? Another, another easy question, eh? Well, right now, um, the, um, the order from Transport Canada has no cruising until next spring. Um, and so, um, uh, I've done, I've been having a lot of conversations with folks in the cruise uh, sector, um, you know, port authorities and, uh, and shore, you know, the, the supply chain for the shoreline excursions, and um, they're all very concerned. Um, but they, they know at this point that even if Transport Canada said cruising can come back tomorrow, most of the ships have been redirected to somewhere else, to other destinations for 2021. So I think that uh, at the earliest, uh, we were looking at um, the start of the season for 2022. That's okay. It's good to know. I know that um, 
obviously the cruise cruise industry impacts uh, Marsha uh, down in Vancouver as well too, as as is in Yukon. I know Beth just uh, you, with the the screen the the background that you have there, uh, you'd be standing right on the rails where the White Pass would be uh, bringing people in from the cruise ships right now if it was in full throttle. So um, we're we're hoping that'll be back next year for sure. But um, I, I'd like to go there one day. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, hopefully there'll be a train and you'll be able to be right there be able to catch it next year maybe there you go um marcia do you have any thoughts on the, on the cruise i know it's a it's a major factor for for tourism uh in the west as well as well as the east yeah as well. I, I i don't really um i don't really have much to add to what beth um has has captured there you know she's right on top of it and uh i know it's you know it's of concern to many parts of the country most specifically the West, which um, does the bulk of the cruise business in the country. And uh, all I know is that politicians at every level are aware of the challenges and also the pain that um, decisions like this inflict on, on operators. So, um, you know, I, I, I think the minute that the opportunity arises, um, they'll take advantage of it. Thanks for that. Um... The so another question. This one's uh, back to me. So, how does Yukon think that the Canadian travel trade can assist with the recovery? And that's a that's a tough question. Um, I I would say from what I've heard from industry, um, and this is again from what I've heard, um, the the key word is flexibility. You know, I, I think that um, it's it's really important that when we're looking at refund policies. We need to be able to, to roll with the punches of what COVID's delivering right now. Things are changing week to week. And unfortunately, uh, the planning cycle that, that is, is needed for, for the industry uh, most years, just it, it's not there right now. People are being asked to turn on a dime. And um, anything that Travel Trade can do to help, um, help build in that, bake in that flexibility for, for, uh, for when, when they're talking with, um, with potential clients is, is a big thing. Um, flexibility within programming as well too. So um, what may be being sold, it may have to be modified based on COVID restrictions or this out or the other. Um, I think it's just about just keep ma just managing expectations on, on that end. Um, I would say too that um, just working with industry just to, to, to being able to um, accommodate start, starter booking time or shorter booking times um, just because we are going to have to turn around if things open up, maybe if they open up in September, you know, it may be a matter of, of, uh, being able to, to, again, turn on a dime that way. It, I know it's a, it's a tough, it's a tall order to ask, but, uh, anything that can be done on that end would definitely be a help to industry. And I guess the other thing for, our, for our destination too, is just, um, really focus on, on, uh, on looking at the destination's key selling points. So um, for the Yukon, it's looking at wilderness, looking at the wide open spaces we have here, the safety that we that, that comes from that, the fact that we've got licensed operators and, and to Beth's point, the fact that we we are applying the WTTC seal. Um, industry's taking this seriously and uh, that's an important message to, to put out there that uh, the Yukon's tourism industry is ready to, to recover once we're at that point, so. That would be that would be my answer for that one. Um, but I, I know this is a question probably being asked all across the country. So uh, maybe I, I'll put it to 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 we'll maybe start with Beth. Beth, do you what are, what are your thoughts on this from a Ontario perspective or, or from from Tyac overall? Well, I you know again I think everything that you said is really um, is really on point. Um, the the good thing that that we know is that Canadians want to travel again. But the other good thing that we know is that um, uh, other people want to travel to Canada. Um, and I, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but we're, but, but I will tell you, you know, RBC is coming up in a few weeks and we're really pleased by the number of buyers that are participating, buyers and sellers that are participating in the show um, as, and, and the number of meetings that, and appointments that have been set up. Um, that really indicates that, that there's still a strong interest in Canada as a destination. Um, and that's, I think, you know, like hold on to that because um, uh, we will travel again. We will welcome guests back again. Um, and, um, and I think that those little kernels of evidence are, are things that you need to make sure that you keep remembering. 
That's a great message, Beth. Um, and Marcia, do you have any thoughts for, on your end on that? Well, I, yeah, I would echo um, the thoughts on there should, there is, are many reasons for optimism. You know, the reports back from our in-market reps in, in the UK and other parts of the world is that the interest in Canada remains really strong. But to your point, Blake, it's all about flexibility. People are uh, unwilling, of course, to commit in this environment unless the policies around refunding and whatnot are very, very uh, flexible and, and um, uh, generous, I would say. Uh, and you know, this is a great time for uh, travel trade operators in Canada to really better understand product that we have here. Um, because Canadians too will be looking for advice about what's open, what can I do, you know, their, their uh, opportunities for um, travel in Canada have never been better, I would say, and they'll look for advice. Um, so, you know, to the extent that you can even speak to your own local uh, market or um, uh, partners uh, across the country to, to be able to sell Canadian uh, product more, you know, in new ways. I'd say take advantage of that to the extent you can. Just one small point on business events. Um, and business events have very long booking windows, as you know, so conferences and things. But uh, And those organizers are very hypersensitive to things like um, health and hygiene and safety protocols and all of those. But the business event side of our operations is really picking up for 2022. So that's a very healthy sign that the world is seeing us favorably. That's great. That's very reassuring. Thanks, Marcia. Um, we have a question in the Q and A. Um, this one's this one's uh, to to Taya. So um, I'll try and take this one. Um, so is Taya in, is Taya at Yukon in, inquired to Yukon government about having them at uh, having them change self isolation requirements to align with the recent NWT changes. You know that the NWT changes uh, came into effect this week, and they were announced this week. Um, there's a I, I can say from a, uh, from our from our perspective, we have reached out to the new government. So for for those who uh, on the call who who um, who aren't based in Yukon, the Yukon just recently had a, a, a territorial election, uh, the results of which just were determined uh, earlier this week. Um, so the uh, so our our chair has written a letter to all three party leaders. Uh, urging, uh, urging collaboration and communication with the CMOH, as well as uh, outlining some of the key things that the industry needs right now. Uh, one of those things is, is um, having a look at self-isolation requirements and seeing what we can do to, because we, because we do realize that that 14 day self-isolation uh, does hinder any, any kind of travel. Again, it comes back to what the CMOH says, the ultimate decision on, on public safety lies with, with that office and the government. Uh, but we will continue to, to, to plug on that. Um, we will, we will be able to, to discuss that a bit more in detail, uh, tomorrow as well too. Um, so Taya Yukon will be having a, a tourism forum as we do each week, um, tomorrow at noon. So, um, if, uh, for the, the, uh, the person asking the question, if you'd like to, to engage in that a bit more tomorrow, we can, we can certainly talk about that more, but I guess what I would say is uh, on the self-isolation side, um, I'd like to commend, uh, some of the the, uh, the, the innovation and creativity that's come out in the past year on that side. I know that um, the Wilderness Tourism Association of Yukon just recently um, worked with the CMOH for um, uh, um, developing guidelines to help uh, uh, tourists um, uh, isolate in wilderness. So uh, there's, there's that option now too for uh, that's, that falls along the lines of the outfitters strategy. So um, I know that there are you know, there are some limitations that understandably, but I think it's, it's great to be able to see some of the things that have been done on that front. So we'll continue to work to see how we can, how we can make things work, but um, that's where it's at right now. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll, I'll put that out as well too, to our panelists have, uh, I, I know that the, the self-isolation piece has been a, a real um, challenge for, for everybody right now, but I'm just wondering if uh, Marsha, if you, have you seen anything, uh, innovative across the country right now, things that worth that really kind of pop and stick out that you'd like to, to mention? Nothing in particular, I, I wouldn't say Blake, but um, there are uh, some, some promising pilots, I think, going on in various areas. Guelph comes to mind, I think, where they are looking at different, uh, different 
lengths of stay for quarantining. And I think governments certainly are very well aware of the impact. You know, it's un, it's unfeasible <laughs> for a 14 day quarantine to uh, ever be a supportive of tourism. And so, you know, to the extent that those can be removed through um, rapid testing protocols, uh, different types of regimes for isolation. I know that they're trying a multitude of things across this country in hopes that they'll find the right combination of stuff that works for industry and works for um, for our health conditions. Thanks, Marcia. And Beth, I know that, that you've been doing a lot of work with the WTTC over the past year as well too. And uh, just wondering if, if you heard of any anything in Canada or any best practices that that might be worth exploring uh, here in Canada or here in the Yukon even as a, as a pilot? Well, really, um, you know, watching the policies around the world as far as uh, people moving, it comes down to testing, testing, te you know, I, you know, proof of vaccination is another big conversation that we're having all the time, but but it comes down to testing. And if we can, and, and you know, there's been, there's been great uh, improvements in the rapid testing systems um, and we'll, you know, we're encouraged by, by the efforts that are being put forward to, to, to find new ways to uh, test faster and more accurately. Um, so um, you know, those, are the, those are the things, those are the, the conversations that are happening at the global table. Um, but I do want to just say, like, you know, here's proof put, you know, in the pudding as to why these town halls are so important. Um, I know that in Northern Ontario, uh, there are resource-based tourism operators, you know, flying fishing camps and, and wilderness camps and that kind of thing, who um, have been talking about wanting a set of self-isolation protocols, much like you were just talking about. And so to be able to say, hey, you should check out what they're what they're doing in the Yukon. <laughs> will be great because uh, this is how we you know we are we're, we're all in this same storm together. Our our situations maybe a little bit differently, uh, different you know sector by sector within our industry or, or province by province and territory by territory. But but we're all in the same storm, and so if we can support each other and learn from one another, um, that's what it that, that's what we need to be doing right now. So thanks for sharing. <laughs> That's a great thought. It's a, it's a, it's really. I think it's a good, good note for us to, to, to wind up on. Um, you know, we, we, I'd love to be able to continue the conversation, uh, but unfortunately, the, the clock, where clock is run, run down. So we've only got about a minute left. So um, I just like to take this opportunity, uh, just to thank everyone for joining this town hall and for submitting your questions. Uh, for those that did not have your questions answered live, um, we'll send them to the panel and ask that they reply to you by, by email. Um, once again, just a big thank you to the Tourism Industry Association of Canada and Destination Canada for being with us today, and a big thank you to all of our participants, as well as the technical crews that put this together. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for helping with this. Thanks, everyone. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks.